God bless everybody today. It is April 12th of 2023. It's been about a week since I did my last um, video. Um, I've been extremely busy, um, taxes, and I've got a number of things to deal with. Um, so I just wanted you to realize I'm trying to do updates when I can. Um, I am going to do a couple educational uh, videos before long on uh, connections uh, between paradigms and the profits and things like that. But um, let's go over some of these articles. Um, I'm just going to cover some brief stuff. This is ramping up extremely quickly in Israel. And they're being attacked by multiple different sides at this point. Um, through the Golan Heights, um, Gaza, Lebanon, through groups like Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran proxies. Um, Iran's moving materials and, um, you know, different things into the country through this uh, refugee uh, influx through the earthquakes that had happened so all this these arms and things are being moved into the country we're starting to see uh, Iran build up um, all these areas around basically surrounding um, Israel on, on multiple different sides and so um, now the day after I made my last video, which was on April 5th, things really started to ramp up. And I was trying to tell you, we're in Ramadan. And Ramadan runs from March 22nd to April 21st. And so we're going to see this continually to ramp up. And the other thing you have to realize is during Passover week, um, during the Resurrection week, you had... Um, three different groups at the Temple Mount. You've got the Christians there, you've got the Jews there, and you've got the Muslims at the Al Mosque, um, Al Al Zak Mosque. Um, sorry if I can't say that properly. Um, so all these groups are um, working against each other, and they're causing a lot of conflict up on the uh, Mount. There's been uh, people that barricade themselves in the Mount. They've had uh, you know, riot police go up there and clean these places out. Um, actually, I believe that they've restricted some access for certain groups. Um, uh, I believe they've restricted all non-Muslims from the al Mosque um, until the end of Ramadan, which is April 21st. Um, so the day after I'd made my last video, and I was talking about this ramping up, um, We've got all these different things coming on here at the same time. Uh, we had multiple uh, rocket barrages into Israel from Hamas and Hezbollah and all these different groups. Now, there's been so many different missiles they've been launching at different times throughout the last week or so that I'm not going to cover them all. Um, but I believe if you go back and you look at this, this was the worst attack on Israel since 2006 um, and so we have to look at this this is escalating quite rapidly and so um, this is not going away they're not done they estimate that Hamas and Hezbollah and these groups have a total of approximately 150,000 rockets they could launch uh, from multiple locations um, into this area so if you look at the map of Israel, and I'm going to try to show you it here, you've got a number of areas that you should be watching. You've got Golan Heights, you got the West Bank, you got Gaza, you got Syria over here. Um, all these areas around here, especially in the north, and the Golan Heights, you've got this buildup of these Iranian proxies. Now, you're not going to have as many things in Jordan, but in the same breath, you've got the West Bank and you've got Gaza here, so you have potentially rockets being launched from multiple different sites. Um, Lebanon, Golan Heights, Syria, West Bank, Gaza, through Hamas, Hezbollah, and all these different groups. You had a number of rockets launched from Gaza. Now this was about five, six days ago. And so Israel retaliated in response to this um, and hit targets in both Lebanon and in Gaza. 
And so this just keeps escalating. And so that's why I keep saying you got to watch these attacks because they're going to escalate. We're in Ramadan. All these things are happening all at the same time. I also talked about in the last video how they put 2,000 members, um, National Guard, on the Temple Mount and the surrounding areas to quell this uh, violence and uh, these different things, but it's not working. And so there's all this going on. Now, the person that runs this um, 2,000 member National Guard is the gentleman here, which was the man I said had originally caused the problem on January 3rd. And if you know about my paradigm, January 3rd is an extremely important date. But on January 3rd, he decided to go to the Temple Mount and create a ruckus. And this then re has reverberated on since, and a month and a half later, we're watching this basically devolve down into a potential war between Iran and Israel. But if you look at the prophecy, it clearly tells us that Israel will attempt to um, eliminate Iran, and they will fail, and then Turkey will come in later, and I'll go over that as um, over time. And I'm also going to do some videos about how that plays in with all the prophets, the major prophets, as we move forward. So, so you got all these different buildups. You got this major religious holiday going on with three different groups: the Christian, the Jews, and the Muslims. Um, you got this this uh, Ramadan is lasting till the 21st of April, so things are going to continue to move forward. Israel has now banned all non-Muslims from the Al Azhar Mosque until Ramadan ends on the 21st because there's so much uh, problems. Um, they're having so many tr uh, different problems in the area, and so the tensions are extremely high. Um, a lot of people have been injured and um, killed on these areas, and so um, this isn't going away anytime soon. And I can produce a lot of articles that show you just how bad this is over here, but they're restricting areas due to a lot of different um, killings of different air, uh, groups, um, Palestinians, and different things like that. And so these areas are being restricted through these um, 2,000 um, guard uh, group that this uh, national security uh, person's put together. And you can see the violence is um, starting to intensify. And um, this isn't ending well. Um, you know, Nat News still trying to build his right wing government, and they're still trying to. Um, remove these settlements and reoccupy them uh, through Israel and you know and um, the Jewish people and so this isn't going well and um, it's it indicates I've been trying to explain this to people you know Joel 1 is extremely important right now Joel 1 clearly tells you that the fortunes of Israel are going to start to wane that they're going to have all kinds of issues that they're going to be dealt with plagues and riots and it's a breakdown of a complete system. Um, and that before we're done here, we're going to see them attacked by the sword through Gog um, of Ezekiel 38 and 39. But you have to have Daniel 8 happen first. And um, I'm going to do a little series because if you go into Daniel 7 through Daniel um, 12, those five chapters, um, five or six chapters, you can see there's a progression and that it talks about even in seven how these kingdoms will form and they'll radiate into the future. And so we need to look at how that's all broken down. And I've done that a number of times. And I've also talked about the paradigm and how it affects the past uh, president of Israel, the uh, present president of Israel, and Erdogan of Turkey, because I believe and have said for many, many years now that Erdogan is the white horseman. Once he invades, um, after his election win on uh, May 14th, he will invade. And because he basically has um, Iran surrounded, um, I believe that Iran will fall quickly as a nation. But as Daniel 8 clearly tells us, the Medes or the Kurds, are going to for, be forced to join Iran or Persia first, 
and then once these two nations form we would see their destruction and that would happen through Turkey now I've talked about how this is going to happen if you look at the prophecy and I look at just the prophecy I'm not trying to make things up here it tells you it's going to happen quickly when Iran falls by Turkey he'll smash both the Kurds and Iran at the same time once they join he's going to do this because he has Iran surrounded and now he just came up with a warship that is a drone carrier and I keep talking about this is not conventional war as we know it he is in a perfect position to launch drones air land and all these different things all Iran at the same time so if you look at this map you realize that Iran is in a terrible position. Turkey, which has a border with Iran. Azerbaijan, which is controlled by Turkey, which is genociding the Armenians. They control this border here. They control Turkish, Turkmenistan, excuse me. They own um, and control the Taliban. Turkey controls the Taliban through Afghanistan. Um, you got these other areas down here where the Houthis and some of these other groups are, so you got to watch that. Um, you got Iraq, um, which not necessarily Syria, but he's going to invade Iraq and Syria, so he's got Iraq. So think about that. He owns Iraq, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan. Afghanistan and he owns and and controls some of these groups down here by the Persian Gulf that Iran is not in a very good place and then I talked about how from Azerbaijan where Tehran is about 50 miles from the coastline from the Caspian Sea that he could come in there and basically eliminate them and through these drones missiles air force and and uh, land invasion through um operation claw sword he's going to come down and invade syria and iraq as he's been talking about this isn't new news this he's been talking about this for months the only reason he didn't was he had those two earthquakes up here so he's going to do this fairly soon i believe he will do that right after the election cycle as he's watching his economy collapse and actually his economy started to get better but right after the earthquakes it tumbled again and so now Erdogan is um, in a he's in a time schedule that he has to deal with and he's on God's time schedule and so that has to happen and if you look at the paradigm I say that he has to invade he's going to push those Kurds down to here as the uh, prophecy says he'll destroy Iran once these two nations align Iran and the Kurds once Iran falls in the nation, he'll drive through Iraq and through Jordan to Egypt as the prophecy of Ezekiel starts to form. So Daniel 8 is completed once Iran is um, destroyed. Ezekiel 38 and 39 would start to form into Egypt. He leaves a sixth of the armies behind. He moves up into, excuse me, he moves up into Israel between the two seas attacks Israel I indicate on the paradigm if you looked at my paradigm of the modern three, um, three modern day kings um, based on all the different things that I produced um, and I've done massive studies on this nobody's paying attention to it but I believe there is something here um, that this would then um, happen around October middle of October to the end of October of this year so he would destroy Iran, and if it's a possible time that it could happen. And I'm not saying it, it's, I've got a crystal ball here. But think about this timeline. Turkey invades around the end of May, first part of June. He drives into Iran. He, Iran could fall by July, and end of July, and he could be in... Israel and Egypt and having all this conflict down in here by October and if you think about it from Iran through Iraq and through Jordan to get he has to go through Jordan to Egypt okay and 
he has to touch this tip of Israel because it's landlocked through the Red Sea. So if he tries to drive from Iran through Iraq, Jordan, and through Israel to Egypt, and then he comes back into, Egypt, into, into Israel, he's already started to attack Israel in the fall. So I think this is going to start to break out fairly quickly. And if you don't believe that Operation Claw Sword is going to happen soon, um, like I say, the earthquakes are what kept him from launching it before the election. But because of the earthquakes, he couldn't do anything because of the humanitarian problem on the ground. And he started to see all these different groups come into the area um, and funnel weapons and refugee supplies and all kinds of different things, um, you know, support supplies, different things like that to this country and um, Syria um, to alleviate some of these um, hardships on these people through these earthquakes. But this is a good example of what I'm talking about. Erdogan is running an election campaign based on fighter jets, drones, warships, and tanks. He's not running. He's going to war here soon. He has no choice. And it's all about the Kurds. Okay? The Kurds are the important key here. If you look at Daniel 8, Daniel 10, Daniel anything in the 12, it talks about Darius the Mede and how the Medes are important and those are the Kurds. So you need to be watching the Kurds. He's building this massive army of drones and all these different attacks thing and he is the second largest um army um military in nato um so realize he's not just some guy to play around with turkey's massive and to get him out of this devastation of his general election and his on may 14th which is the birth date of israel imagine that it was in june and he moved it to that date that's a, why. Why would he move it to May 14th from June? Does it make any sense? You know, he's been in power for 20 some years here. And I've talked about how he, that reflects a king of the past and how long he had been in there and how he is that king of today that was in the past. We'll see how that works out as we move forward. So he's not talking nice. He wants to rebuild this caliphate. He's going to rebuild the Ottoman Empire and he's going to bring misery upon not only Iran, the Kurds, but all the areas around the Middle East, that quarter of the planet that's going to be placed into war by the White Horseman, which is Erdogan of Turkey. He's going to die on the sixth seal through the wrath of the Lamb. And 616 and then you go to 8 1 and 2 and it clearly tells you that all seven seals break first and then he hands out seven trumpets after you have a half an hour of silence the seals happen first then you get into the trumpets and where do you get the time when antichrist starts to rise the fifth and sixth trumpet the pit opens up Antichrist and the false prophet rise and the Lord comes back on the seventh trumpet right before the wrath of God, which is the seven bulls. There is a process to this. Please understand it. And if they're telling you the seals break in the bulls, then you can take them back to 8, 1, and 2 and say that can't happen. It can't happen that way because God says it can't happen. Not because I'm telling you that. Go read Revelation 8, 1, and 2. It clearly tells you Seven seals, all seven seals are broken, half an hour of silence, and then and only then does he hand out these seven trumpets. But because it doesn't reflect people's certain commentary that they build over the years, they leave that part out. You need to question these people when they do that and say, well, why? How do you, how do you explain that? How, how does that work? Because it doesn't work if it's literally in God's book and you've now distorted it in some way this is breaking out quickly bitcoins you know there's another thing i've been talking about bitcoin bitcoin is not going to break up much past 30 and it's going to drop for long um, i said it might not get over 29 it did it broke over 30 it broke over 30 a little but it's not going to break up much past that i don't think and you're going to see it drop out as 
you see the core inflation go up a little bit, but base inflation's gone down. You're going to have a Powell meeting on the May 3rd. He's going to raise the rates because unemployment's not going down. And he has no choice. He's following two things, inflation and unemployment. He's not getting unemployment. And core inflation keeps moving up. Two-year bond keeps creeping up on him. He's following the two-year bond, so he's going to go there. Um, that's the reason they want to know whether he is going to pivot or stall or stop right now because the two-year bond is falling out and he's chasing that. And so when the two-year bond's at four and he's at five, they're asking why is he going to raise. Well, he's going to raise because unemployment hasn't come down enough to matter and he's still fighting core inflation, which is at six or higher. That's why. God bless everybody. Find the open door. Find Jesus. It's the only way to get to heaven. You have to believe in the Son. The Jews are going to be under massive judgment here because two-thirds of them do not believe in the Son, Jesus. And because of that, he's going to place plagues and the sword against them before he removes the third to the hidden place, which is called the remnant. Only a third get to... to have that privilege and if you go into joel 1 and 2 you will clearly understand from those two chapters that this is going to be extremely brutal on israel and it's coming you're going to start to see the plagues develop now because you're in the spring now you're going to start to see them get hit with multiple different plagues from multiple different levels and they're going to be decimated by the time god gets there in the fall so god bless everybody Keep the faith. It's going to get interesting from now on. Also, one last thing before I forget. In the middle of all this, you have a total um, solar eclipse on August 20th of 2023. It was actually my father's birthday. So, um, I keep telling you, my family seems to be strong in birthdays. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but it falls on my father's birthday. Um, not that that really means anything in, in biblical terms, but it's interesting timing for me. And um, you'll notice that this um, is going to affect us in the time when Ramadan ends on the 21st. And so is he signaling us a, a certain season or something here? Um, just something to take note. And that it's going to... Not everybody... Um, let me see if this actually shows it. It shows the path here. Um, we're not going to see it much. Um, uh, and it, it has an interesting path. Um, so just realize there's this has happening. And this is an event that's not going to happen again for a while. So God bless everybody. Have a great night.